The pull-ups is a great compound movement to develop your entire back and probably one of the best strength focused movements to build your overall power. But after training for three years, I decided that it was time to eliminate the pull-ups from my routine. So in this video, I'm gonna be explaining why I stopped training the pull-ups and what I do now. So let's take a couple steps back a couple years ago as when I first started training the pull-ups on a more consistent basis. And if I remember correctly, this might be around five years ago, so 2018, give or take. And pretty much I remember always kind of training the pull-ups, but I never was able to get, you know, that perfect eight to 10 rep count per set. I was only doing about like maybe no more than like three to five per set. That's how I started off with the pull-ups in general. So that was my first goal, just getting some basic understanding and strength with the pull-ups by aiming to get at least 10 reps per set. And after some time, you know, this actually did work, but I'm not gonna lie, I don't remember the exact structure or training program that I followed. But I will say this, even though I didn't know anything about programming, I knew that if I wanted to get better at something, I just had to practice it more. So usually, right, this is back in the day, I would train the pull-ups at least twice a week, um, no more than three times a week in the actual gym. But outside of that, I would actually practice the pull-up by investing in a pull-up bar at home and aiming to get about 50 total reps per day. And what I would essentially do is break up the amount of sets that I do per day until I actually got up to a point of being able to do 50 per day. Now, obviously I didn't just like, you know, start day one doing 50 reps in one day. You know, I would eventually work up to that total rep count. So I might've started off with like 20 total reps, then 30, then 40 and so on. This really just helped overall grease the groove to better help understand a pull up and build the necessary strength adaptations to improve. Now a couple months passed doing this exact protocol right here. I would say it's pretty just straightforward. And you know, I was able to get about 15 reps per set on the bodyweight pull ups. And this was actually right around the time where I actually started looking into uh, weighted calisthenics and then started following the more knowledgeable athletes within this kind of training niche such as Austin Dunham, Daniel Vadnall, and Mikael Schulz. I might have been saying that wrong but Mika Schulz, Mikael Schulz, um, yeah they're all great. They're great content creators, great athletes and you know I definitely will say I took huge inspiration from those particular folks in regards to like weighted calisthenic training. So kind of just implementing what they put out and what videos that they um, have. So then I figured out that what most people do is the five by five set and rep scheme that's specifically tailored for strength training. So looking back at it, I realized I was doing this about maybe just once per week in terms of like doing my way to pull up a uh, session as well as the way to dips as well. And I started off on the way to pull ups by just being able to do about 20 to maybe 30 pounds. I don't recall exactly, but I'm gonna try to pull up a video. And then the other training session would just be bodyweight pull ups. So I would essentially do like a as many reps as possible, um, doing like a more higher volume approach, um, just to essentially just train my body weight because I didn't really have that strong foundation with weighted pull ups. So I wanted to make sure that at least was still training the bodyweight pull up, you know, slowing down the tempo, maybe doing different progressions like archer pull ups and so on. So that would essentially be consisting of two total sessions for my pull-ups one being weighted using five by fives the other one being more of like an amrap as many reps as possible um, using either the standard progression or different progressions now that said this is actually the time where i really started to notice changes in my back particularly like the width of my back and it was all thanks to just doing a whole bunch of bodyweight pull-ups but more importantly starting weighted pull-ups AKA my weighted calisthenic journey. And to be honest, like a lot of people would just be commenting about what I do for my back, you know, how did I get my back so wide, et cetera, et cetera, just boosting the boy, you know what I mean? And I would pretty much just tell them like, yo, just train your pull-ups, whether it's body weight or weighted pull-ups. Now don't get me wrong, I still did my horizontal pulling, um, like the inverted rows or barbell rows, but a lot of people who train in my gym, particularly like my friends, they still did the horizontal rows, like the machines, the barbell rows, all of that. But one thing that I noticed was missing was they wasn't focusing on the pull-ups. So I was like, okay, if we're all doing the same thing, but I'm doing one thing different than the others, then that variable that's missing for a bigger, wider back was just simply a pull-up. So I was like, hey, just focus on the pull-ups. And little did they know, once they started doing those minor switches to their program, by adding the pull-ups into their training routine, they started seeing the same results as I did. But let's take it back to me, right? Months go by, maybe even like about a year and a half to two years, I started getting really good at the weight of pull-ups, right? To the point where I was doing about 100 and 
35 pounds for like three or four reps, give or take. And um, for five reps, maybe like 100 pounds. I don't remember the exact numbers, but I was for sure doing like 100 pounds to 135 pounds between the three to five rep range. Now, once I got to this point, man, my back was like higher tier. Like people were noticing with the shirt, without the shirt, it didn't even matter. They knew that what I was doing for my back was working. So obviously I would be like, yo, just start spamming weighted pull-ups. But keep in mind, I didn't really know how to program it the way I am doing it now. So all I focused on was a more linear based approach, meaning I'm just increasing the loads over time, utilizing negatives here and there. If I like missed a set by not doing the particular dedicated rep. But other than that, I was just focusing a very beginner centric focus style of programming, but hey, it still worked, right? Now, Cobra, this is all great, right? But why did you take out the pull-ups from your routine if you saw so much success? That's a great question that you might be thinking to yourself right now, but here's why. During the time of me specializing in the pull-ups and the inverted rows as my only compound movements and honestly only exercises, not gonna cap. Sometimes if I don't do inverted rows, I'm gonna do barbell rows, but that being said, I will only do two exercises for my back. I too did the same approach for my other muscle groups, right? Using a more less is more training mindset. And I still consider this is a valid uh, mindset in terms of like not doing too much exercises, sticking to at least two exercises, no more than three to four, but I'm always on that two to three exercises per muscle group uh, selection. So that's another valid take that I did back then that I still do now, but I will say that's only correct if you're using the correct exercise selection and also training within the right intensity. Otherwise, it's just not going to matter if you're utilizing that very simple exercise selection approach. So that said, a few years into my training career, I noticed that my limbs, specifically like my biceps, right? Not right now, but back then was comparatively smaller than my torso, so like my chest and my back. I think I remember watching one of the videos from Alex Leonidas and he mentioned how people have torso dominant figures, meaning a bigger back, bigger chest, but smaller limbs. And he called it like a spider physique. And I was like, bruh, like it literally just clicked. I was like, yo, he talking directly to my heart, to my soul. You know what I mean? So I was like, man, if this is a real thing and I noticed it literally Later into my training career, I was like, yo, I got to fix this muscle imbalance. I got to start shifting this mind focus in terms of like the way I train so I can still have like a proportion of physique, right? Now I need to focus on specializing on my arms so then they can catch up to my torso. And during that time, I realized that I only chose isolation movements for my biceps, whether that be like bicep curls with the dumbbells or the rings. Like I never really focused on doing a compound movement for my biceps, which eventually clicked and it made things so much simpler. If I wanted to get the most bang for my buck for a muscle group, I should always start off with the compound movements, which led to me doing the weighted chin-ups instead. Now, before you go into the comments typing, well, pull-ups is also targeting the biceps. Well, yes, but it's far less significant compared to the chin-ups, especially when in the chin-up position, your hands are more supinated and your arms are at a lengthened position, which equates to a more advantageous stimulus on the biceps. It was that simple. Just like how I focus on growing my back with the compounds, I had to make that same approach for my biceps. And let me tell you, the same effects happened as I started a way to pull us from my back to people noticing how my arms grew significantly after transitioning to training the way to chin ups for my biceps. Only difference here now is that I have a much more calculated approach to training and better overall exercise selection. So here's what I did. I trained the chin ups as my primary movement and then isolated them with further volume using weights like the low cable bicep curl or hammer curls, sometimes using like the rings as well, doing like ring curls or pelican curls, which I made a full video talking about the details of how I train my biceps. So if you haven't watched that, be sure to indulge because there's mad game in there. That said, I truly believe that the weighted chin-ups and chin-ups overall help bounce back my physique to a more proportionate figure. So if you're experiencing that same torso dominant spider physique problem that I had back then, then I highly recommend you to make that switch. But hey, what do I know? If you like to see more content like this, be sure to follow me, man. I'm the Tough Fitness Scout. Cheer. No cap. Cobra trains. He's up next. Make sure y'all subscribe to him. He's number one out here. He's the toughest fitness guy out here.